In this video, my goal is to have this one connected to the network and accessible as a Skahoy raw panel compliant device controlling an ATEM switcher with multiple pages of buttons. And it will, for most parts, be really, really easy. You'll also learn about Reactor Skahoy's professional grade configuration engine for broadcasting and streaming control. And best of all, you won't need a computer to use your Stream Deck Neo anymore. It connects directly to our hardware products. And finally, I'll give you some technical details about the Stream Deck Neo, something nobody else may report, like power consumption, pixel dimensions, and where you can find our open source library to work with this one. First, some unboxing details. It has a really nice round feel. It has two upright positions here on the back. Oh, actually, it has like three. It can be all flat. It can be in this position, and then you can lay it down a little bit more. I find that very flexible. Unfortunately, the USB is undetachable. If that's an advantage or not, I'll leave that up to you. It means you have only USB-C in the other end. And in our case, we need a little adapter to plug it into a USB-A port. But um, that's a cheap little device you can buy online. Anyway, it has a non-slip foundation, which is really nice. And I would say generally, this Stream Deck Neo has everything you would expect from a Stream Deck, maybe except the high pitch noise from the internal power circuitry. I don't know if this is just my unit or if it's everybody's units, but it's not super pleasant. Before we move on to plugging this into Skahoy products, I just wanna show you the Stream Deck application on my laptop. It looks like this. It has out of the box two pages with functionality. You will know how to configure using this tool because you probably own Stream Decks already if you're watching this video. The new thing would be the info bar. And you see you have keys, info bar, just like on the Stream Deck Plus where you have like a place for the encoders on it. And uh, for the info bar, you can basically choose what you know, time of day style you want uh, from these different graphics. To get rid of your Mac or PC with your Stream Deck, you need a product like the Blue Pill server from Skahoy. This would be the cheapest way for you to connect your Stream Deck to a device without a computer and have it networked so you can use it in applications like Reactor that is installed on the Blue Pill itself. This can be used for all kind of device control in AV and broadcast. Today, we'll actually connect it to one of our other products the PC view. And if you scroll down the page on darkroomskahoy.com, you can see we have a bunch of controllers. Every one of them that looks a little bit like this in the same kind of enclosure will have that USB-A port on the backside and you can install the Stream Deck application that we have written to connect Stream Decks into these units and use them as a supplement to all the unique hardware features these products have. They have faders, joysticks, knobs that you don't find on Stream Deck. And the Stream Deck can be a nice supplement to all of that. So today we'll be working with the PDC View. Let's just search it up. It looks like this beautiful, beautiful controller with a joystick. I really love this one. So that's the product we'll be working with. It's in black today, but it doesn't matter. So what happens when we connect the Stream Deck to this one? See, on the USB-A port here on the side. Let's just plug it in. And then you'll see the Stream Deck will boot up and it will be ready for action. Let's do some ATEM control. First we'll do is to add a panel. We are looking at the web UI of the PDC view and searching on the network, you see there's a ton of devices here, uh, like panels that we can add and that all comes from our network. And one of these, the Stream Deck Neo right here with the serial number it has and this IP addressing port, we select that one and you'll see immediately the Stream Deck actually uh, blanks out. We can also identify it once by pressing this button. We can select a new configuration, which we'll do and we'll just go with the standard name here. So now we are basically ready to program the buttons and we'll do that in the configuration tab where you can see the Stream Deck Neo has been identified by a very nice graphic. Now, before we can actually meaningfully do anything to these buttons, we need to add an ATEM switch. We need a device to control. So we'll also search for the ATEM switch on the network. And I'll just type in ATEM here in expectation that my ATEM switcher on the table next to me will pop up and it does. I save it. In a moment, it will be connected. And there we go. Yes, back to the configuration tab. So now I'm quite excited about this because you already know Stream Deck. It has pages. We have done the same down here in the bottom. We have like a background page. And on that, we can start building functionality. 
We'll do that straight away by just selecting these buttons. So I drag across them. I open up Casper's ATEM Mini. I'll scroll down to the section Program Preview. I'll choose Program Preview Select. I like this because it gives me red and green tally on my buttons. Before it actually works, I need to pick MU number one. I need to pick an input. Um, right now it's like input zero, which is black. I'll just choose one. But of course I want it to be different inputs. And I do that by opening my batch editor where the input tab here, I can basically plus one in these fields. I can then save it all. And you'll see now I already have atom control. Let's just try it out, okay? So we have preview select on those buttons. That's great. Now. On the lower buttons, I want to put cut. So we'll just uh, actually I can just click it. I'll search up cut here. There will be a cut action right there. I still need to have ME selected. It was done out of the box for me. That is great. So I also want to have well auto. Yes. So we'll just do auto here and uh, auto transition. It is right there. In this case, the ME row was not previously selected. So I'll just do that. And then I can move on, like um, keyers, for instance. Uh, let's do that across these two buttons. I want to have upstream keyers. Uh, ooh, that was a lot of action. So upstream, I'll just search that up. So upstream key enable, that's nice. I have uh, the ME row to select. I also do have the, the key I need and then an approach. An approach means, is it like a toggle? Is it an on? Is it an off? Is it like hold down? And then as you release, it's it's uh, not on anymore. And in this case, if I just choose on, it actually means that it turns the key on as I press this button, but it does so for both of them. Therefore, I want for one of these buttons to be an off button. So now I have like on, off, on, off. Why? Well, because I have two buttons, I need to fill the space. Otherwise, I could just have chosen toggle and it would be like on, off. Next thing we want to do is to create another page. And we have these awesome two paging buttons down here. But before we program them to actually change pages, I just add a page down here. So let's uh, make it an aux, aux page. We want to select sources on the aux bus. So we'll do that. Um, just go to this one. Now, as I'm changing page, you'll see that this page it doesn't seem to actually do anything on the Stream Deck. Now I'll turn on or disable transparency because transparency means that these two pages or the page aux is like transparently lying on top of the background page, but we want it to blank it out. This is what you'll be used to do on your Stream Deck yourself. So let's just do that as a beginning. Again, we'll just drag across them. We'll search up aux, we'll find aux select. We'll pick the aux channel. There's only one on this ATEM switch and we'll pick an input just for fun. And then uh, and to get started, we'll pick this one, input one, two, three, four. We have only four inputs on this one. And uh, then I also do like to have like a blue color on it. So I'll now open show more and uh, that reveals a number of options that we can uh, do in the inspector inside of Reactor here. So for instance, I can put in a custom color that is not coming with the action I chose out of the box. So that's all nice. You see now we have aux select on this one, which is great. Now let's just try that one out. Aux select is also working. Now I want to add yet another page. Let's just do that with the macro page. So a page for macros. Now, once again, I created this page transparently. Now see what happened when I go to the macro page, it doesn't blank out. It's transparently showing the background. So the background is our default macro is on top of that. And you can use that very clever ways to uh, create your Navigation, but I'll come back to that and how this is relevant. First, I'll drag across these, then I'll hold down a modifier key and drag across these. So now I can choose macro for eight buttons at a time. And uh, we'll just play macro. Once again, we'll just pick a macro number. We'll use the batch editor to change that macro number to one through eight like that. And you'll see that the displays shows you exactly that. And the same is true on the Stream Deck. Once again, I want to have a different color. For some reason, I have associated this with Amber. I also need to set the intensity to dimmed. And to be honest, I think they are not lighting up because there are no macros defined. If there were macros, they would light up. So I'm a little bit breaking my rules here. But this gives you a glimpse into how this universe of configuration works. So you can actually customize quite a bit, but you can also choose things out of the box. Actually, one thing that annoyed me was that this button has cut ME1 for some reason. I want to change that to just be cut. So I'll open again feedback. I'll find the text line one, and then I'll simply write cut in this field. So I'll just delete this one, 
right cut exclamation mark. So yes, okay. So you see how easy it is to configure these things. Now, quite nice, we have three pages. It should be quite easy for you to understand what's going on here, but we also want to navigate these. So this is what the job of these two. Now, it's in this case, I want to do something clever because instead of putting a paging action on each page, I want to put it on the background. And then I want the other ones to be transparently using that. So let's just uh, actually, well, pick this one, hold it down the modify key to pick the other one. And then let's just collapse this, use navigation, use switch pages, which is like a cycling action that will now make this cycle the paging of the stream deck. Let's try it out. Okay, so uh, as I'm pressing this, you can see that something was happening. At least I came from the background to the next page. Now, the problem is that on this page, the next page, the aux page, you see that these keys, these two, they are currently uh, blanking out. They are overriding the underlying one. So I, I need to right click and delete behaviors. Like, there's like a hidden behavior that blanks out the underlying action here. So I'll just do that for both of them. Because then as I go back to the background, you'll see when I go to the aux page, these two will pick up the action from the background. This is already the case on the macro page, because on that one, we did create a layer that was fully transparent, and we only overwrote the eight buttons. But for the preview and the next on the aux page, we had a opaque page that blanked out everything. Okay, so now let's just once again try paging and it is cycling through everything as I am pressing the next button. What about the previous button? It does exactly the same in the same order. We need to change that. And this is the end of easy. Sorry about it, guys. Um, when you get your Stream Deck Neo in your hand and connect it to Blue Pearl, it is possible that we have a page up and a page down action because yesterday I realized we really need that for this use case. But in this case, I instead get a chance to introduce you to the depths of Reactor and how we can do this. But it's gonna be pretty steep, okay? So I go to the background page. I want this one to go the opposite direction. So now I will explore a little bit what is actually inside this behavior that I just put on it. Now, if I go to show more, and if I scroll all the way down to my Jason, my precious Jason, something that some of you will hate me for and some of you will love me for Jason inside this system. But um, basically this is relying on what we call a master behavior, a parent called step change that defines that we are kind of stepping through a value, but it's always forward in this case because it's a button with no edge. We have something called four way buttons that has edges like up, down, left, right. But if I show the parent behavior of this one, you'll see what is inside. And it turns out that the driving event handler is a pulsed event handler. It, re it actually expects like encoder pulses plus and minus coming in. So what I need to do and what I can see is that the no edge is an increasing pulse. So every time it's adding one, it's like increasing the, uh, the, the value. So what I need to do is to just copy this code. Um, because I just can't remember it out of the box. So I'll take this one and the, the feature we have here is that I can modify this JSON by basically putting in this from my parent. And as I'm doing that, the parent values will be overridden. So I can remove much of this, getting to the point where I have this event preprocessor and then I can remove all the definitions for things that doesn't exist on the stream deck, like different edges on the buttons. So let's just do that. And then the point is that this pulse value, I'll set it to minus one because it means it's decreasing the value instead of increasing. So that's great. And then I need to remove all these commas that I don't need. And I need to put in some curly braces to end it all up. And if you don't, you'll get error messages. But I bet this will work. So are you ready? Let's first confirm that we have cycling action up on the next and then on previous, we have cycling action back now. Pretty cool. Now, I also want it to end when I reach background or macro in each end. I can also do that. Let's look into the parent behavior because it turns out we have something called a pulsed rollover condition. And if I set that to the string value false, it means it won't roll over at the end. Now, uh, where was that anyway? I think it was inside the, yep, right there. So if I put this one in, I need to put it like that. False, whoops, yes. 
Let's save this one. And okay, are we ready? This is for the previous. So now I press the previous button and then I continue to press it, but nothing happens because I have basically instructed it to not roll over to the highest value. I need to copy this event handler for the upgoing action because that one is still rolling over. You see that? So by doing so, clicking here, uh, wait. Um, okay, we need to go to the background. Very important because this is where the action resides. We're working on the background here and we will show more. We'll go to the JSON. We will open this one up and put in the event handler we just had right there. And I don't need any of this because we don't want it to go backwards, but I just need that rollover condition to be put in place. So that is done now. Let's test it out. Okay. Yes. Reaches the end. What about the other way? Reaches the end. Isn't that beautiful? I really love it. But um, if you felt confused about that, don't worry. We will have a out of the box one click action that you can just apply in this way. Uh, but what you have just witnessed is that there's basically no end to what you can do with Reactor if you're willing to take the learning curve to get into the under the hood of the whole system. We want to put something in a display. And uh, on the display here, on the background, we can do kind of the same. I just want to create an empty behavior so we are not picking anything out of the box. We are essentially relying on putting in default feedback ourselves. So I'll just type in a title here like it could be stream stream deck whoa neo and uh submitting that okay so now we can see there is a title in the display which is beautiful cool nice okay um then i want to also add a text line number one and in this field i will put in um well we can just put hey so we can see that okay so this is how it works that's also great now in fact what we can do inside of here is to add a dynamic value what about putting in the name of the page so the variable that drives the page is called sec page sorry about that tech name it means the page the section page um uh, if that was even better for you in any way. So if I put in this, you see now I have like page one, it says page one. And uh, as I'm paging through, uh, at least you see page three. Why is it not showing on the second page? Well, I know because on the second page, we started blanking it out. So there's still like a behavior that is blanking out this one. Let's just delete that. And it is going to now shine through what is on the background. And the background behavior, behavior we just put in the one that is hidden, uh, shown in green here, shows the page name, but it shows the value instead of the actual name. So now, now what I want to uh, demonstrate to you is that we can even modify this further. So if we just go back to this field and we click this open, we are able to add modifiers. So instead of seeing the value, we can see for the current value, we can see the name of the current value. That is what we have right here. So if I submit this, save i now see the name of the value which is the label the background label the orcs the macro etc okay so that is how reactor works this is configuration of your stream deck quite quickly we had operation of preview we could do cut auto keys on off all that nice stuff is in place multiple pages for actions customized content in the info display and navigation that goes forth and back exactly as Elgato was envisioning that the Stream Deck Neo should function. What you have just seen me do on the Stream Deck is the same you can do on all the Skyhoy panels. You just have more variety, you have different sizes, you have form factors that are made for broadcast and AV production. And you get the components such as a joystick or a T-bar, encoder knobs, you have four-way buttons, you have displays as well, you have flying faders, all these components can be programmed in the same way using Reactor. We designed it specifically for live production contexts. So with the Stream Deck, connected to the backside, you can combine the best of those two worlds. And that's really our mission to invent the future of broadcasting control. At the end of this video, I promised that I wanted to give you some technical details about the Stream Deck Neo. First of all, this is a USB hit device like any other Stream Deck you have encountered. It has product ID 154. It is close to how the Stream Deck Plus operates. At least this is how I integrated it. It has a 10 button readout in the uh, stream from the, the USB port. It has also displays, custom displays with 96 by 96 pixels, just like a Stream Deck XL. 
And the buttons themselves are 17 by 17 millimeters. There is a spacing of 19 millimeters in between, which is the perfect optimal spacing of keys on a regular keyboard. So uh, well chosen. Um, the touch buttons here are taking color from the underlying display and it is about like 16 pixels high that you uh, need to send the graphic, not necessarily 96. Uh, I couldn't exactly tell you because I did not take it apart so I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, it is basically uh, a display underlying this. There is not any touch action on the display itself or the info bar as they call it. The info bar has a display behind and it is 200, uh, 248 by um, uh, 58 pixels natively. Uh, some of these pixels are cut off by the enclosure. So just be careful, you can't use it all the way to the edges, but that is the native resolution. And it seems Elgato is using 232 by 50 pixels themselves on the graphics that I've seen from their application. Power consumption wise, this is 180 milliamps. A Stream Deck uh, regular MK2 Mark II is 100, uh, 250 basically milliamps. So there's uh, plenty of uh, headroom on your USB-A um, power supply to these. If you want to uh, develop yourself, please uh, find our Go Stream Deck GitHub repo. There you'll find our source code as uh, MIT licensed open source. And um, to run it on the Blue Pill um, platform on either the Blue Pill server or any of our products, you need a license to the XPanel Stream Deck application. It is a package you install inside the operating system. It has a license. It is uh, 79 euros or $99 for a license uh, of your Blue Pill device to connect essentially as many stream decks as you want. But I think the limit is probably like uh, seven or 10 and you would use a USB hub, obviously. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked it and it was uh, useful. It was introductory to our platform ecosystem and so on. We are very enthusiastic about hearing your feedback. So please write me at innovationlab um, at skahoy dot com for any comments and feedback um, and I'll be happy to reply back to you and take your ideas in and uh, whatever else you have to share with me.